You guys love to see the notes that I take in my Bible on Sunday mornings in the church pew, which I share on social media like Instagram and TikTok. And so this past Sunday, my notes got really in depth, really creative, had to like tape stuff in the middle of church. Today, I'm going to share with you what notes I took, how I took them, why I'm like adding paper in my Bible midway through church, all so that we're further inspired and equipped to be in the Word of God this week. Let's begin. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Faith over here in this community of Bible nerds that you guys have built. We love talking about how to study God's word and be faithful to it, as well as take notes that better equip our study of the word of God so that we can build off of last year's knowledge or yesterday's knowledge and further like deeper study the Bible, not just relearn the same stuff every year. And so we do take pretty crazy Bible notes. Well, this past Sunday, I was filming the notes I was writing in my Bible for like an Instagram reel and it ended up being really complicated. So I figured I would make a full length Friday video to unpack what I wrote in my Bible, why, and how. At our church, we just started a series through Revelation. So we're in Revelation chapter one. And he keeps making the jokes that we're just like every other church that does Revelation on election years, but it really has already been so fruitful and I'm so grateful for it. And I know someone's gonna ask, so I will say this is, like my church has multiple pastors that preach and this is not my husband that was preaching. Actually, you might even see my husband's like thigh sitting next to me or something as I'm filming. Here are what my notes looked like at the very beginning of the sermon. You can see I really just have notes from last week and a couple other ones from prior weeks, as well as my cliff notes taped on the side. If you guys wanna check out my one page summaries of each book of the Bible, I'll have them linked down below with a discount code so you can download and print them and put them in your Bible as well. I love my little one page summaries of the books. They helped me. I was just looking at one earlier today, but I do wanna note that there's not a whole lot of space for me to write on here. It was already stressing me out last week is I had used like, I don't know, I think it's a half inch margin. I had used up all the blank spaces. There wasn't a good place for me to take really easy notes. And so as soon as the sermon got started, and I was looking at my page, I was like, I have no idea where I'm gonna put all my notes. On average, I probably take like three notes a sermon. So, you know, I probably need like one square inch of space in my Bible. And I just didn't have that. So as the sermon got started, I flipped to the back of my Bible and there I've added an envelope. This is just a homemade envelope. You can like actually take apart envelopes that you get in like the mail or with cards and trace them on like scrapbook paper and make your own pretty envelopes and glue them in your Bible. I've done that in videos here as well. But here in this envelope in the back of my Bible, I store tabs and extra paper for this very purpose where I wanna be able, like if I'm on the go at a Bible study, at a small group, listening to a sermon, I can readily have the resources available to tape stuff into my Bible. And so you can see I have extra like scrap paper. This is like a pretty sheet of scrapbook paper that I found in a pad. And I just like cut it up into like the usual size that I use in my Bible and stuck it in that envelope for a rainy day. And today is that rainy day. Now, if you're curious about the paper that I like to buy for my notes, I personally like using a little bit thicker paper. It's not cardstock, but it's just a little bit more thick. And I feel like that wrinkles less and bleeds less, etc. So I really like the scrapbook paper that I use and they just come in pads. You can get them at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, like all the craft places, but I'll have a couple options linked down below that I really like. And the tape that I use, again, will be linked down below, but this is a tape that's supposed to age better. They call it archival tape. And so it's supposed to not yellow, break, crack, etc. And what's really cool about this tape is it doesn't come on like a dispenser where it's gonna stick to stuff. It has a backing and you can also rip it. So I have little ripped pieces in that envelope and I also have like a small roll in my Bible bag, which I have a video sharing my Bible bag and all of that. This is ending up to me like just linking a bunch of things and sharing a bunch of products. And I don't mean that to be this video, but I know people are gonna ask me, so I do wanna mention these things. Anyway, in my Bible bag, I have a roll of this archival tape, but this archival tape, I can just rip off like a little piece and then use. And I don't have to have like scissors or a tape dispenser or anything like that. So that's a really good plus about this tape. It ages well and it's really good for like on the go taping. <laughs> if we ever knew that that was a thing, that's crazy sentence that just came out of my mouth. But on the go taping is a thing I do apparently. So I'm gonna use that tape, but also I don't have scissors with me and I don't know how many people know this hack, but if you take, let me grab a piece of paper. This is just a scrap piece of paper from Scrapbooking Christmas 2021. I did that in a recent Patreon vlog. I like to keep my scraps for use and other things. Anyway, if you fold a piece of paper and lick it like that and then flip it on the other side, and look at like that, it'll actually do like a really clean rip, a super easy, really clean rip. And so that is like my scissors on the go. Yeah, but it makes a perfectly straight, clean cut. So that's what I used to cut down the piece of paper to be the right size for my exact passage. You know, it's an, 
nice tool or hack to be aware of. So that's what you see me doing here in church. And I try and be there. I need to take a moment and just say, cause I know people are wondering, I try and be as discreet as possible. I, whenever I'm filming, like I try and hold my phone where like people really have to be looking at me to see that I'm filming. There's sometimes I'll hold my phone up and take a picture of someone's getting like baptized or taking communion for the first time or joining the church or something like that. Sometimes I'll take pictures for my husband so he can put it on social medias or put it in an email or whatever. But other times like, whenever I'm filming just for myself and for like y'all's videos on social media, I'm like trying to keep it really low, really small. If I'm like ripping paper, I'm trying to be like really quiet. And there's just like, just be aware, just be mindful of other people. Be very mindful, be very demure <laughs> whenever you're in church taking notes. Cause you just don't want to be super loud. And that's one of my biggest insecurities is like, I am, you know, digging my Bible bag, grabbing, you know, colored pencil when I'm taking my notes or like sometimes I wear my charm bracelets and those are loud. And I think I'm more aware of myself than other people, but it's just something to be aware of and to be mindful of. So we want to be discreet with all of this, but we also want to be like truly saying the word of God. And so it's a line to walk there. If you want to take notes, you can take notes. Just be mindful of other people and not be like super distracting. But I used the little spit method to rip my paper and cut it down to size. My idea for the size of the paper that I ended up with was I wanted it to flip up or down and not hang off the edge of my Bible because flaps like that one might end up either way. So whether it was flapped up or down. I wanted it to not hang off the edge of my Bible. And that's why I cut it down to the size I cut it down to it, which ended up being perfect. Now, the first note that I took was on the repetition of seven here. Now, numbers do not always mean something in the Bible. Sometimes it's just kind of like, it's just a number. You're reading too much into it. Other times, like if it's an author that's known to be using a number as a tool, like John, it's a number as a tool or like 40. Like if it's Jesus fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, that is a allusion to the 40 years of wandering that Israel did in the wilderness and how Jesus is the fulfillment, the new Israel. You know, there's things like that where there's an illusion through numbers, but it's more rare than I think some people want to admit. Like it, just because there's a number doesn't mean there's always symbolism behind it. Here though, here in Johannine writing, we see seven is used over and over and over again in the gospel of John and in Revelation as a tool, as a lens by which we want to see and understand Revelation and the Gospel of John as well. So here I box in both those words and I immediately, like my method is typically to box or circle in a word or a phrase and then draw a line to another box where I unpack my notes on that word or on that phrase. And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of room for my arrows, for my lines. So immediately right away, I just have to mentally accept the fact that my lines are gonna go over words. My lines are never intended to cross out scripture, but they might have to go over or through or around scripture just to take it to the notes. And almost, I think always, I can't think of a time where I could I didn't read the scripture through my lines. But eventually, yeah, just be aware of that. Sometimes that's an issue for me at least. Now I was having a really hard time filming this. So it's a little out of focus and stuff, but as you can see, I am taking my note on the bottom. So like earlier, this is what I ripped, right? Let's say that this is a ginormous flap for my Bible, which I would never do it this big. But let's say this is the flap I ripped for my Bible and I'm gonna tape this into my Bible, but I need to go ahead and write a note because my pastor's talking, he's talking fast and I'm gonna forget what I'm supposed to write. Human, is it intuition? Our tendency? Yeah, like our natural tendency because we're students, unless you're Japanese, but like most of us are gonna wanna start writing here because literally every other time in life, you start in the top left-hand corner and you work this way, right? Maybe if you're Japanese or writing in Hebrew, you're gonna start over here and work this way, but either way, we're gonna start at the top and then work down. But here with Bible notes, you always wanna take the space that's farthest and hardest to get to. You wanna start far, and work in because it's only gonna get really complicated if you start close and then have to work out. With arrows, with lines, it's just gonna get really messy, really hard to follow. So I start far away at the bottom of the little piece that I ripped and I start taking my notes here on the bottom. And it's hard filming and everything, so my handwriting gets all messed up and it's out of focus, but that's where I took my note was on the bottom. As you can see, I literally cut off the camera because I couldn't, <laughs> I could not film any longer and try to write neatly. But I was writing that seven is a tool that John uses just to remind myself in case Future Faith's coffee hasn't kicked in and I can't remember this, like I do remind myself seven is a tool used by John. And then I remind myself of the, like what he's saying when he uses seven as a tool here. When John repeats seven here in verses four of chapter one in Revelation, he says, grace and peace to you from him who was who is to come and from the seven spirits. And this is all to the seven churches in Asia. What he's doing here is he's highlighting a complete church here. He's writing to a complete number of churches and the complete number of the Holy Spirit reigning over those churches. But 
we'll get to that in a second. And of course I color it all in with red because this is a unique color. I hadn't used it yet in like this little area of my Bible notes. Now here at this point, you see me, I finally get to tape in my Bible notes here and it's super hard to film, but that's kind of the interesting challenge of when you're taking notes right there during the sermon is fitting it in while he's unpacking an idea or while he's going on and telling a story or an application or whatever. Y'all remember, like I don't write down stories. I don't write down even like necessarily like right now application. If my pastor was to throw in something like, and this applies to the 2024 election because of da 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 da. I'm not gonna write that in my Bible notes because I'm more so focused on my Bible notes for eternal application. But I talked about that in a recent video that I will have linked at the end of this video. The kinds of notes that I take and why. Now, immediately after finishing taping this note into my Bible, my pastor's already saying something really cool. And so I box in the phrase, who is and who was and who is to come. That phrase, I box it in here. And I wrote, this should make us think of Exodus 3.14, Yahweh is eternal God. The I am who I am. The who was and is and who is to come. These truths of who God is, the eternal one, the alpha and the omega, these truths of who he is are super important. And the rest of the Bible comes back to it over and over again. Now I color this all in with green because again, I haven't had a green note on this page yet. That's like this dark green. So it's spaced out. It's not going to get confused with other Bible notes. And then I also note that it's repeated later in the same passage. So it's here in verse four, also in verse eight. And I want to note the repetition there and tie it all together to that one dark green note. Okay. Now he's talking again. He's like telling a story or unpacking something again. And I have a free moment. So at this point, I actually tape the underside of my flap as well. So if you guys don't know this, we'll use this as an example again. Whenever I tape flaps in my Bible, whether it's this way or this way or this way or however way that I tape it in my Bible, let's say it's hinging here. Okay. So I'll put it tape on this side and then I'll flip it down and I'll put tape on this side. I want to tape both edges because I want it to be super in there and not end up ripping my Bible page. I also do want to say sometimes I will wait till I'm completely done taking my notes to tape it into my Bible. All right. So now my next note is actually on a word I had already boxed in for that previous red note. I had previously boxed in the word seven and here I want to take a note on seven spirits. So I make a bigger box around seven and spirits. And even though the word seven is already colored in red, I can still kind of color over it in yellow and see that it applies to two different notes. This is something I come across a lot when I'm doing like word by word breakdowns of the Psalms. I have to do this all the time because sometimes I'll have like four different separate notes on separate different things around a word, around a phrase. I already have it colored in with one color. So maybe I'll come back with an underline if I have to take another note. Maybe I'll just do a bracket or a big loose circle. There's many different ways that you can handle it based on like its placement in the paragraph. Keep that in mind if you have multiple notes that all stem off of one particular word. But here I'm writing what I referenced earlier, this reference to them all having the Holy Spirit and it's one unified Holy Spirit in Christ that's ruling and reigning over these seven churches, the completed number of God's church. Now, as you can see, I'm slowly working my way up on the little flap. But as you can see, my lines are actually starting to really cross over into the paragraph of text. I can still read the text, but it's just getting to be a little bit too much. So for this next note that I write here on the phrase faithful witness, I go to the other side of the paragraph and I'm going to draw my line that way. This line isn't quite as straight. It's not as easy to follow, but I'm going to make it a unique color so it doesn't get confused with the other colors on the page. And for me, that's purple. And the note that I wrote was basically, again, from a pastor, highlighting the fact that this is a reference to Christ's prophetic role. Um, I talk about this in my course, Bible Study Bootcamp, where I share everything I learned in Bible college and in seminary on how to study the Bible. It transformed the way that I study the Bible. And so if you want to study the Bible like a scholar, like a pastor, and you need those just practical tools and tips, but you don't have that time to go to seminary, the money to pay for seminary. So I highly encourage you to check out Bible Study Bootcamp, and I'll have a code linked down below as well if you want to check that out. But anyway, in Bible Study Bootcamp, we talk about how Jesus fulfilled the roles of prophet, priest, and king. So here he fulfills the prophetic role in his faithful witness. And then the next phrase I highlighted was firstborn from the dead. What this is and why the note I write is this is a fulfillment of also the priestly role. Here the note on the word ruler, as you may have already guessed, is the fulfillment of Jesus being that prophet, priest, and now king. Here we see his kingly role, just like we saw his prophetic role and his priestly role. Now into the next paragraph, we have a change of tone. It leads now into this worshipful 
statement of praise. So I wanted to mark that this is a doxology. And now he jumps in, verse seven, behold. Literally meaning like, look here. So I boxed this in and just took the simple note of pay attention. My next note was on this phrase, even those who pierced him. What exactly does that mean? What are you, what are you alluding to here, John? And my pastor made note of how some people do view revelation was fulfilled in reference to the 70 AD fall of Jerusalem. I also just kind of wanted to have it boxed for it to stick out to me of this is me. This applies to all of us today because he was pierced for our transgressions. And so it was like a little application moment for me as well. And then all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Wail? on account of him? My pastor took some time to explain that this is the cry of, we got it wrong kind of idea. Like we placed our hope, we placed our trust in the wrong place. Now I am totally running out of space here on my flap. We're already filling it up at this point, but my pastor's still on preaching. He's just going on. And he talks about how this reference to Alpha and Omega is of course reflective of what we've already talked about here with reference to Exodus 3.14. And so I do want to, highlight that, box it in. There's this high view of God here, as it should be. But I think sometimes when we go to Revelation, when we start in chapter one, when we're reading it and we're treating it like some kind of clue book of what's going to happen, who's going to win the election, when is Jesus coming back, etc., that we actually don't have a high view of God. We actually have a very low view of God and we're trying to control him or predict him or be on the right side of history and just use him. And so I thought it was really telling like how this passage of scripture has a very high view of God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is who was, who is, and who is to come. Like he is the center of our focus not just today, not just our lives. Who's going to be president? Is World War III going to break out? Um, is Jesus coming back in the next year? Like that is idolatry of pride and control over your life. That is not worshipful living. And so I thought it was so notable here. And you can see I have like tiny little gaps of space, but not really anything to take further notes on. But definitely don't miss this video here where I unpack the notes I take and why I take them. I have this acronym CMA and how it really impacts my worship and my response to what I've studied in the Bible. So definitely don't miss this video. I'll See you guys there. Bye guys.